request to talk a little bit about specific spins on different pitches. And those of you that know me, I am a recovering perfectionist. It's hard for me to just throw a video together and get it out there. So I have to get my whole setup going and make this an official deal. Here you go. For spins, I thought it would be helpful to talk about arm slots as well in relation to rotational pitching. So our hips are on our way to being closed, rotating. We're working on that. Some pitchers are gonna be more rotated than others, but that rotation should be happening, one, to keep us safe, keep that arm slot there right next to the hip. What I mean by that is this. Here's the plant. My hips, if you can see them, need to be on their way rotated so that my arm brushes right by this meaty part of the hip right here. So, here is fastball. I'm gonna be coming through my downswing, rotating, leading with the elbow, and I find the arm slot right here. So my spin is 12-6, okay? From the top to the bottom. An easy drill you can do at home, just with a ball in your hand, I call them pull catches. So we put our ball right next to our hip, we pull up, catch over the top. Pull up, catch over the top. Just practice feeling that middle finger come off the ball last. And then that catch, we have to practice the thumb coming off, catch on the top. It's kind of like a finish for peel drop or fastball. Peel drop and fastball are very, very similar. I think that's sometimes why some of my girls will say, I, it feels like a fastball. It kind of is like a fastball. We pull up a little bit more on the peel drop to get that extra spin and downward movement, but you want your fastball to spin down as well. Uh, it's just more effective, way more effective. So now we'll look at the rollover drop. So with that, here's a two seam option, right? I'm gonna put my finger right in front of the lace. I know that tape's there, so if I'm going this way on a two seam, because I'm gonna push this ball this way over the top. So I need that lace, I can be on top-ish, or I need it there for some traction, right? Think of both fingers on top. Two seam is when you spin the ball, whatever correct spin, true spin we're looking for, you can count two spins or two seams going around, okay? This is a four seam. One, two, three, four. We count four. From my experience and just talking the game with others, four seams hold their spin longer, so they might be a little more accurate. They might go right to the spot you're looking at. They might do exactly what you're wanting them to do. Two seams might break a little bit more. They can kind of fall out of their spin and do some extra kind of cool stuff. So you might have it fall into a curve a little bit or add a little bit of a curve, some horizontal movement. Um, I think both are great. Pitcher's preference there. For me, if I have a pitcher that is not throwing above at least, we'll say 54, 55, it's hard to see much of a difference in our spin rotations and revolutions as well. So we need to kind of look at those numbers um, before you see a big difference. But it doesn't mean you can't throw that two seam and keep working towards that extra movement, extra little stuff. And then the other side of that too is a pitcher's development, maturity, finesse, as you get better with your movement pitches, you will start to be able to control and see like, oh, when I do this little thing with my finger, the ball breaks a little bit more this way. It's crazy. It's really cool to see and be on the other side watching pitchers start to learn all of their tools and their craft. So with a rollover drop, the arm slot is a little bit away from the body, similar to a curve. And for me, it's a pitch that we can easily uh, transition or mold into like a drop curve type thing. So when we come through, my hips begin to close, my palm is up, elbow leading, I'm gonna be a little bit more away from my body and I'm gonna work to find what I call a cup of water right there. And then we dump our cup of water out. So we wanna be right over the top with that so that we get that 12-6 spin. Both are great. I, I threw a rollover drop. I got really close into my hip when I threw it. So I tried to get in really tight down here. And when you go over the top, for me, I would pull those fingers up really high and now I have like weird tendonitis in this wrist. It's hard for me to do bench press and stuff over my head that requires weight. Um, so I wish I would have stayed a little bit further out. That's also a better way to transition into a curve drop eventually, or drop curve. Um, curve ball. 
the arm slot, we want to be a little bit of leverage, not, not completely here, right? Because when you're moving full speed, that can be really hard to maintain that and not feel any sort of pressure in your elbow um, or tension. So a little lower, but low enough that where we can keep that palm nice and flat and fingers up. So this is what I would love for a good curve arm slot coming around right here about. So away from the body, palm up. My rollover, similar arm slot, about right here over the top, okay? So right here, I break across my wrist, karate chop, fingers around the ball, finish here, and I see that spinning like a top. So a righty pitcher, that ball's gonna spin in away from the outside corner. Lefty pitcher, I go this way, ooh, lefty example, and it comes in towards the batter um, on the inside corner if we're talking about a righty hitter. Rise ball. This is a good one for those that have great curve spin, but keep that arm slot for them maybe stays lower. So that was one thing for me that worked really well because I just had that arm slot naturally wanting to fall low. So when we're coming through, drive my elbow. I'm gonna get longer here and straighter with that forearm so that my palm is out away. This is great. This is great too, but it can easily fall into a screwball. This is a little more reasonable and it works just fine. Fingertips away and we snap underneath. And now we get 612 going backwards. So that ball goes up. So arm slots, one more time. I'll go through them. Just kind of where our hand wants to be, should be, where our forearm should be. And fingertips, I use that as a good guide. So arm on fastball. We get long, palm at the catcher, fingertips down, snap through right there, okay? 12, six spin. Peel drop, very close to the same. We just might pull up a little bit. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do a peel. It just kind of depends on the pitcher, but think of kind of getting off the ball quickly to keep it simple. Roll over a little bit further out, a little more leverage away from our body. So we're here, our grip, a little further out, right over the top, okay? Curveball is almost the same, but we have our palm up, so we snap underneath. Right here, palm up, snap underneath, just like that. Rise ball, we stay long. So our fingertips are out, palm is out. Staying long by the hip, right here, rank underneath. Um, one funny thing I like to say to my kids, anyways, a curveball, you wanna think of your wrist moving as if you're unscrewing a light bulb. And a rise ball, your wrist moves the same way, but it's like you're unscrewing or turning a doorknob, right? So it's the same, same way we move our hand. It's just a different positioning, different arm slot um, when we throw. So that's a lot of times why you see curveball, rise ball pitchers, they go together so well, because your hand moves the same. Um, we just are in a different position to get different movement on that ball. So I hope that helps. Let me know if you guys have questions. Have a good one.